Hey, it's great to see you again. This is Mrs. K's way for calculating circumference of circles. Today's video is going to cover three parts. The first is to review radius and diameter of a circle. The second thing is we're going to discover and talk about what is circumference. And last, we are going to use that idea of circumference and we're going to calculate it two different ways. So the first thing we want to remind ourselves of is the radius and a diameter of a circle. Before we really get there though, we want to remember that the point right in the middle of a circle, we call this the center. This is really important because the diameter and the radius depend on the center. If we have a, a different end point on the circle and we go from the end point all the way through to the center, we call that our radius. If we go from one point to the circle, not only through to the center, but we go one point through the center all the way to the edge and we go straight through, we call that our diameter. Now, if we want to remember the idea that any point from any point that goes from one end of the circle through the center, no matter what its direction, that's always the diameter. And if you only start from the center and go to an outside point, no matter in which direction, that is the side of the radius. Now, we also want to remember that because a radius is half of the diameter, that means that two radius equals one diameter. So we can actually write that in the equation form as a diameter is equal to two times the radius because it's one radius plus another radius or if we want to just do it with only variables, D is equal to two times R. Now that we remember about our diameter and our radius, now it's talk to, time to talk about circumference. I found this cool visual on this website right here, so I thought I'd play it for you and talk about it while also explaining what circumference is. So before we begin with this, circumference is the distance around a circle's edge. So make sure that you write that down in your math notebook. Circumference is the distance around a circle's edge. We saw that here in the video as the line that went all the way around the circle in, marked in red. Now if we keep looking and we take that circle and the yellow circle and we take it three different times and we take it from here and we move it all the way to the edge one, two, three different times and we unravel this circle and we lay it flat across, we see that there are one, two, three different diameters of that same circle plus a little bit more. We can write that as the circumference is 3.14, so this is one fourth, um, or 0 0.14 of the diameter, and that right there is represented as pi. So pi can be re represented as a decimal 3.14, or as a fraction 22 sevenths. Now if we want to be exact, we use the 22 sevenths. If we want to be approximate, we use the 3.14. But we can see right here that the circumference or that red line, the area around the circle's edge, happens to be three of the diameters and a little bit more. So we can write it as this circumference is equal to pi di times diameter or we can use the commutative property and we can rewrite it as circumference is equal to our diameter times our pi. Or if we want to go even further, another way we see this is that we also know that if we rewrite this, but we don't want to write the diameter, we can get rid of the diameter here and instead we can remind ourselves that diameter is the same as two radii. So we can either write it as circumference is equal to diameter times pi, or as is more commonly known as, circumference is two radius times pi, or two r pi. Now we can use that different equation of our two times r radius times pi in order to calculate our circumference of in two different ways. So we're gonna first start with estimating with pi as 3.14, and the second time we're going to be using the exact as 22 sevenths. So if we look over here on the left, we are going to be using our circumference is equal to two times the radius times our pi, which is 3.14. Now 
Now, in our original problem, we want to find their circumference of a circle with a radius of 8 centimeters. So, 8 centimeters right there. So, we can plug that in, and we get 2 times 8 times 3.14. After multiplying that out, we see that the circumference of the circle happens to be approximately 50.24 centimeters. Now, it's important that we know that this is approximate because the idea that pi is a number that goes on forever. So although we're using the approximate number and rounding it up to 3.14, it happens to be an unending number that would start be 3.14, 159, da 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 da, and it goes on infinitely. So by approximation, we know that this is about 24 hundredths, but it could be something more. Now, if we want to get a little bit more exact, we can use the fraction form of pi on the right side, and we can estimate that pi would be 22 sevenths. So if we write our equation again, we are using the 2 times the radius times pi, because we know here that we have a radius and not a diameter. So if we rewrite that with our new 8 centimeters, with 22 sevenths. Remember we can put both these different whole numbers over one. Now I'm going to multiply my numerators times each other and then my denominators by each other and I get 352 sevenths centimeters. So as you can see we are obviously going to be dealing sometimes with decimals and sometimes we'll be dealing with fractions. We'll let you know which ones we expect at which time, but just understand that we can find circumference two different ways by using two different values for pi, whether we want to approximate or if we want to have the exact number. And as usual, I usually end with a picture of my puppy Callie, who's now one year old. Here she is when we're gearing up for a nice long hike. She's even strong enough to carry her own pack with all her own food and own toys. So, as much as you're working hard learning about circles, she's working hard carrying all her stuff on long hikes. So, see you guys tomorrow. Let me know if there's any questions. Please make sure that if you do have questions, you email your teacher or add something to the comment, questions, or concerns section of your Google form. See you then.